I try to sit up, but there is a mound of something under me that's in the way. One of them gets the knife with its dull, rusty blade. Someone should have cleaned it with brick dust. Their eyes are wary when they see me looking. How can I try anything in this state? They ask me what your name will be. I touch your cheek and smell the sweetest spot on your milky newborn head. Cora, I say. Cora Burns is born just near here in Birmingham jail in 1865. And she spends the first 20 years of her life moving the short distance from the prison to the workhouse and then here to the Borough Lunatic Asylum to work as a laundress and finally returns to prison. Cora has always struggled to control the violence inside her and she's haunted by memories of a terrible crime that happened in her childhood. Without waiting to hear the taunts, she ran. And as she careered past the lock and onto the towing path, she heard herself break into a laugh as loud and mirthless as a lunatic. <laughs> her lungs heaved and her old boots pinched in new places. Cora stopped, panting, to let a towering barge horse go by and realised how unused to movement she'd become. Finally released, Cora reluctantly leaves the city, barefoot and penniless, to take up a position as between maid. The Larches was a square white house, neither old nor new, with tall windows and a shallow slate roof. Gravel clung to the rag bindings on her feet as she crunched towards the house. No one had seen her yet. It wasn't too late to turn back to the familiar flat greyness of the town. But her feet, screaming for rest, led her to a half-open back door. Cora learns to be a tweeny maid. Below stairs, she works with Ellen Beamish, the scullery maid, and with Cook, with whom she finds a strange bond. Upstairs, Mr. Jerwood is locked away in his laboratory, but others seem to inhabit the space with him. The library air oozed mustiness from old books lining the shelves along the back wall. Tranklements of all sorts crammed the cabinets. Cora went to the fireplace, the metal pail clanking against her legs, and kneeled on the hearth rug. Behind her, something seemed to swish between the furniture, and she looked around. She turned back to the ashy grate, heart tapping. Who are you? Cora befriends young Violet, but she's not the master's daughter, so who is she? Why does she sometimes behave so oddly? And where does she come from? Cora becomes desperate to find Alice, the girl she thinks of as her workhouse sister, who holds the key to Cora's past and who disappeared after the terrible act that bound them together forever. The book delves into the roots of Cora's violence. Does it come from her scars or from her heart? Is nature stronger than nurture? The story touches on themes of mental illness, motherhood and memory, whilst also exploring the deep divisions in Victorian society and the birth of psychology as a science. I hope you come to understand Cora, if not to love her and to enjoy the twists and turns of her journey through the dark side of 19th century Birmingham.